AC. We run the ring. We run the yard. We run it all. And my personal favorite, the 2015 Gil Rogers, Dry and Very White. And no better way to start a National Wrestling League Kansas City episode than with a major base in PowerPoint. I'm Ben Miller sitting here with Christopher Fulton, and it looks like Niles Plonk has something to say. Finally, a little class and sophistication to the PowerPoint. Niles, save us. He looks more agitated than usual today, almost storming How them. dare you come out here and talk to these people about wine? We do own wine bars. I am the connoisseur, Niles Blanquet, and I have told you, just as I have told you, I am bringing class and sophistication to the NWL. Looks like he took exception to Major Basin talking about wine that the NWL would put anyone else's name on a bottle of fine vintage wine other than Niles Monet. He's absolutely right. But then again, boss man, you don't seem to care, I don't care. I do not what care. the NWL represents. Major, the final four, should be something that represents something that will carry the NWL to class and sophistication. Major Basin leading a Franzia chant at Niles Plunk. You can make jokes all you want, Major, but of all the people competing in the Final Four, who's the one you want to represent the NWL? Who's the one that's going to bring class and sophistication? That's a great point. That's a great point. Very classy guy. What do you think it's going to be, Dak Draper? Which will be Niles Plonk's I opponent. I have a lot of respect for the Mile Magnum, but his fraternity lifestyle, his party lifestyle, is certainly something you got to consider. You don't want to represent the NWL. How about Lakota Red Cloud? Yeah. Tonight's main event will be Blaine Meeks taking on Lakota Red Cloud. You know what? You want somebody that unsophisticated to carry around the championship belt? Yeah. All he's going to do in an interview is grunt and scream. Oh, give me a break. Oh, I've ever heard him. Oh, wait, wait. Then again, you could be talking about the person whose last name represents weakness all in itself. And of course, I'm talking about Blaine Meeks. Oh, come on now. He know. Well, oh, looks like match. Blaine Meeks is coming to the ring and may have something to say about those comments that Niles Plunk just made. There he is, sticking his nose into other people's business. Again, that's what this guy does. He's not sticking his nose in anybody's business. He's defending what Niles Plunk was just saying. Or, or, or going against what Niles Plunk was just saying, that he is probably the least qualified of the Final Four competitors. <laughs> I love it. And of course, right before Fantastic. Blade Meets can even get one word out, here comes the show stealer himself, Jack Draper. A step further. I've had to share a poster with you two idiots for the last two weeks, and I'm not letting you mislead these people into thinking you're relevant when it comes to the Kansas City heavyweight title. Gotta say, he is the man to beat Dak Draper. Fan, look at that. The, that fan in the front row had a big pair of tidy whiteies. Apparently, those, that other fan didn't like Major or Blaine Meeks. And you, Niles, Niles, 
walk? You can't Well, he actually walk. pronounced it right. You think you're cool with your class, huh? I didn't like class when I was in school, and I sure don't care about it now. That sure explains a lot. Don't wave at me. Don't think I don't know what you've been trying to do trying to be my friend. Well, news flash. Nobody wants to be your friend because you're a loser, a geek, a nerd. You know what? I'd be his friend. Shame on you! Well, now Lakota Red Cloud, the warrior, is coming to the ring, and it looks like he is not to be forgotten in this Final Four. Wonder what Lakota has to say about all no, this. Probably nothing. He can't talk. Thanks for coming out here. Oh, give me a break. You uh, know I he can talk. I know that, uh, while foursome might be fun, I never want to be a part of a fivesome. So uh, I'm going to let you guys do your thing, and uh, I will see you later. Major Bazin making a quick exit here. He knows, he he know, he know smells trouble. Things could get uh, hairy pretty quick here in the ring. I'm not here to talk. I'm here to fight. There you have it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love it. He just threw his glass of wine in Blade Meeks' face, and Blade Meeks is just standing there. Well, that is terribly upsetting. Oh! That's a cheap shot. Right hand by Blade Meeks, and now he's in hot pursuit of Niles Plunk. Oh, look what we have here, a stare down of two behemoths here in Kansas City. Could this be some foreshadowing to the uh, main event, the uh, the finals? Could be. Great. I would love to see a match like that. Dak Draper taking on Lakota Red Cloud. That could be one heck of a Kansas City title match. And we may see it. Well, we have an exciting card of action here for all you great fans tonight, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. Guys, I'm Jet Royal. I'm Jax Royal. We're the Royal Blood, and you're watching NWL KC. On tap tonight, the NWL KC Final Four Championship match. Uh oh, looks like we got trouble here in the Scottish Rite Temple of Kansas City. The Howlets are back. You know, we thought these guys maybe uh, after they got put through tables, they were gone. But uh, they said it. They told us maybe it's not their first fight. These guys expect fights, and they're here. They got something on their mind. Well, look at Don him bullying like Don Diablo right out of that ring. I like him already. Take that microwave, uh, microphone away from Don Diablo. Shut they're your heroes mouth. in my book. It took four men! It took the Royal Bloods, Blaine Meeks, and Red Cloud! And two tables! That's right, stupid, you can't count! Two tables! Is that funny? Yeah! They deserved it. They deserved it at, hey, after what hey, they've done. Bet you like that. I bet you all like that! I bet you like that just as much as those four clouds like that! But you all need to understand something right now! The fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, is that that's not the first time the Howlets have taken a butt kicking right here in this ring, and it certainly won't be the last time. We, we were born in this ring. This is where we do our job, and there's one thing that all those four pups need to understand. Now, now you've stepped into our world. Now you're in our domain. And brother, there is nothing you can do when you're in this 
They are on fire here tonight. We are starting off with a bang. This is real, and I, I put money on it that there's not another tag team in the back that can step foot in this ring and face the men of mayhem. You know, I think they're right. These guys are on a hot, wait a minute. Oh, look who's decided to come out of hiding. It's Kyle Mars and Luke Holiday. the end. They brought a referee with them. This guy's, uh, looks like they're here to fight. And we're, we're underway here. Our first match of the evening. This going to be a match tonight. Our first match of the evening is the Howlands taking on the end. And it looks like the end have come ready to wage war against the Howlands. This guy's got some nice new ring gear. The end, uh... <laughs> But these guys, they're a strange bunch for sure. Tucky to clothesline here, double arm drags, and a pair of double drop kicks right to the side of the head. Were those in the basement and the sub basement, those drop kicks? You're darn right, they were two beautifully executed basement drop kicks by the end. Now, these guys, the end, they're a little kooky, if you ask me. They're kind of a doomsday sayers, uh, you know, always worrying about the end of the world, but you know what? They might have the end of their world in here with the Howlands. These guys are uh, as motivated as I've ever seen. Really rich, working over that arm of Marco Howlett. Tag in here at the end, putting some double team work in on the Marco Howlett and drives a foot right into the face, going for a cover here. One, two. Come on, cuz. Luke is, uh, he's on fire right now. Luke Holiday backing Marco Howlett up into the corner here. Nice European uppercut. Tag into Kyle Mars. Like you said before, these two may be a little off, but they sure have a lot of moxie challenging a team like the Howlett. Absolutely, but if you got to make a name for yourself, that's how you do it. You go after the very, very best. And I got to say, the Howlett's, uh, you know, even though they've had some uh, rough times here, they have caused more havoc than any team or anybody, any single individual here in the NWL. These guys really know how to shake things up. And uh, they're a fantastic tag team. Don't don't let that don't let all their antics fool you. Hard shot right to the midsection by Luke Holiday, showing his expertise with his fists and his feet here. Oh, knee right to the small of the back. Leonel Hallett getting involved, and Marco clocks his cousin right in the face, and another spinning back kick to the stomach of Marco Hallett. Now, are they cousins? Are they brothers? Or is one an uncle, one's a nephew? You, you never really know the relationship with the Howlets, and I think they like it that way. I believe you're right, but whatever the case may be, these guys spend a lot of time in and out of the ring together, and they are focused on one thing, picking up wins here in the National Wrestling League and getting paid. Absolutely. Oh, hard belly to back suplex, nicely executed by Marco, going for a cover, one, two. You know, you talk about the Howlets being thugs and just being tough guys, but they show you right there that these guys can wrestle. They're very, very well schooled in the art of professional wrestling. And uh, that's, I think, something that throws a lot of folks off. They just expect these guys to punch and kick and those things, and they get caught with moves just like that. Luke Holiday trying desperately to fight his way out of the corner with hard forearm strikes, and the Howlets put it into that. Beautiful standing drop kick by Lionel Hallett for a man his size. Did you see how high he got up there with that drop kick? Going for a cover, this could be it too. Right on the point of the jaw. Absolutely, these guys, uh, uh, Holiday is in the wrong side of town right now. These guys are so good at cutting the ring off. Look at that, look how close uh, Lionel is to his corner, right to his here, partner, and how far away Holiday right, is from look. Kyle Marks. Take a good look at your and it almost yeah. seems like since the Howlets have have returned here to the National Wrestling League, they're even more vicious now than when they left. And they're gunning for not only you know more wins here in the National Wrestling League, but they're going for the Royal Blood. Absolutely. You think this issue with the Royal Blood and the Howlets is over, you are sadly mistaken. I think the Royals thought, you know, that they had them, had them all taken care of. That the, 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 the issue with the Howlets was solved and settled. It's far from that. Oh, we've seen this before. A series of strikes and a cannonball right to the corner of Luke Holiday. And then a vicious reverse cannonball smashes him right into the corner. 
These howlets are out for blood here tonight. Going for a cover, one, two. Kyle Mars thankfully in to break up that pinfall attempt. Absolutely, look, if he didn't make it in, that match was over. He, they, he has been, uh, beat, his partner has been beaten and battered for a good several, several minutes right now by two very, very tough men. Oh, hard right hand. It seems like every time the Howlets are here in the Scottish Rite Temple, the list of enemies that they make grows longer and longer and longer. And also the revenge list, like they talked about at the beginning of this, before this match started, they're looking for Blaine Meeks. They're looking for Lakota Red Cloud. Heck, they might even be looking for President Major Bazden. Oh, they absolutely are looking for President Major Bazden. They've made it no secret that they are willing to do whatever it takes to be the most successful tag team in the world. And I think these guys are well on their way. Oh, hard. But the end, hard forearm shots here by Luke Holiday. But the end has something to say about it. Although they don't come out of hiding that much, when they are in that ring, they are skilled professional wrestlers. And they're looking to put an end no pun intended, to the uh, win streak or the, the reign of mayhem that the Howlets seem to have here in the NWL. Nice leg drop, rolling senton combination, smashes him down right in the center of the ring. These men are so agile for guys their size. Going for a cover two, almost a three count. Holiday gets a left shoulder up just in the nick of time. He is fighting on instinct right now. These guys have really been putting it to him over the last couple of minutes. Now, just showing you just how good of a team the Howlets really are. They so know what they're thinking. They come in with a game plan. Again, they're not just these mindless thugs who just want to throw uh, punches and kicks. These guys really have a solid game plan for a team they probably did, they didn't even know they were going to be facing. Tonight. It's hard to prepare for a team like the end, especially when because they're not on the scene a lot. Another cannonball into the corner, and they're oh, he's going for the reverse cannonball. Luke Holiday moves out of the way. He's in the wrong part of town. Still needs to make the tag to his tag team partner Kyle Mars. Kyle Mars has been on the outside for a long time. That might be his. Uh, that might be the chance. opening he needs. He needs to make that tag. His arm is outstretched. He's ready for that tag. And if he can make it, this could be the turning point in the match that the end is There's looking for and was unable to make it. Marco cutting That's him off. off. Now he now does it. Kyle Mars coming into the ring with right hand shots to the face of Marco Howlett. Kyle is uh, completely fresh. He's been out there for a long, long time for a guy like. Kyle, it's, it's like starting a match uh, brand new right Oh, now. kick right to the head of Marco Howe. Could be going for a German suplex here. Marco puts the brakes on, it. hits him with a reverse elbow, grabs now him again. Him. Nice German suplex by Kyle Mars. Kyle Mars really feeling the momentum on his side. And Lionel Hallett comes in with some strikes right to the face. Puts it into that momentum real quick. Referee Todd Countryman, a little liberal with the uh, count there. He needs to, it looks like he's lost complete control of this match. All four men in the ring now, and double kicks right to the face of Lionel Howell. Now they're setting up Marco, spinning kick, knee right to the jaw. Did you see that? Absolutely. Oh, Beautiful wow. combination right there. Back of the, them right now. Back brain kick and stunner combination, almost two. Almost gets a three, and you see the the look on the face of the fans here at ringside. They were hoping that was it for the Howlers. The fans here at ringside at the Scottish Rite Temple and everywhere around Kansas City do not like the Howlers any, and uh, they will cheer anybody who wants to uh, take a shot at those guys. Going to the high rent district here is Luke Holiday. Luke Holiday still looks a little worse for wear. Get on that top rope, gets shoved off by Mark. I believe that was uh, actually Lionel Hallett shoved him off. And, oh, just Ouch. drives him into the center of the ring. This could be it for the end. One, two, three. He's got him. And the Howlets Unbelievable. put it in. No, contest. Again, no pun intended the to the tag team of Kyle Mars and Luke Holiday. the end. Looks like they're going to have to go back to the bu bunker and prepare for their next contest. An impressive showing by the end. These guys are a very impressive tag team. But I don't think anybody right now anywhere is any hotter than the Howlers. These two, these two guys are really on a uh, tear. And they're motivated. What is this now? Grabbing a chain. Oh, no, what could he? I hope he's not thinking. I 
I, they just need they won the match the match is over they need to get out of the ring they're going to the pay window tonight they don't need to inflict any more damage on Kyle Mars Listen, he's already been finished off these guys are sending a message to everybody out there that uh, it's a war when you're with the Howlands it's not just a wrestling match looks like they're throwing him into the ropes oh thank Martin. gosh Luke Holiday pulls his partner Kyle Mars to safety, and it looks like the end will live to fight another day here in the National Wrestling League. Probably a very, very smart move there by the end. These two guys, like I said, they are motivated, they are aggressive, they got weapons. Uh, there, nobody is stopping this these is a guys. message to yeah. the royal blood. We're coming. We're not dead yet. <laughs> We're not dead yet. And we'll be right back here on the National Wrestling League, Kansas City. Blaine Meeks here, and you're watching NWL KC. Dex, bro, Jet, that 450. Easy money. Took him out. That shooting star is pitcher perfect. I didn't think you were gonna land. Ga Just, guys, I guys, I, I hate I to interrupt you. What's up, Marty? I, what's up, guys? I just want to say congratulations. Thank you. Tonight, Thank you. you put another victory in the KC column. Another one. Another one. What is that? Was that four to one? That's four to one. Four to one. I mean, you, where is this aggression coming from, guys? I, I love it, but where is it coming from? You know, the Howlets, they beat us up pretty good. They embarrassed us. And we're sure not going to let that happen again. And tonight, the underground, they started it. They interrupted my favorite part of every NWLKC show, the president's PowerPoint. And they asked for the no DQ. So we brought out that table and gave it to them. Yep. Or they gave it to you, but. All right. I'm standing. I'm standing. It's all good. We got the one, two, three. So now you guys have taken out the Howlets. The Howlets. The underground. Listen, Howlets. Where you at, guys? Howlets. Where you at? They said they said they were they were gonna be here and they're they're not here. They're all talk. They're all talk. They're all bark, no bite. Howlets. Done. Underground. Done. There is one team though. There's one team we want to beat. They know who they are. We know who they are. All the fans in the NWL know it. Yep. Find us. Come get some. Let's go. This is the Mile High Magnum Dak Draper, and you're watching NWL KC. The Lakota Warrior is just that, a warrior. Me and Lakota are friends, but we understand that there can only be one Kansas City champion. And as big and as bad as he is, as much of a Hulk of NWL as he is, every Hulk has a Wolverine. Blake Meeks likes to call me Hulk, and I like to smash. It's fitting, I like it. Bottom line, it gets down to brass tacks, down to business. I want to be KC's first champion. And welcome back, wrestling fans, to the National Wrestling League, Kansas City. It is main event time here in the Scottish Rite Temple. Blaine Meeks is taking on his friend and former tag team partner, the Lakota Warrior, Red Cloud. It's going to be a heck of a main event here tonight. Blaine Meeks, uh, I've seen it every single week, as annoying as this guy is. He is certainly one heck of an athlete, a very, very tough guy, great opponent. This is going to be a fantastic match. And there he is, the Lakota Warrior Red Cloud is making his way here into the Scottish Rite Temple. And I gotta tell you, 
these guys, these friends, these former tag team partners are going to put on one heck of a show for all the fans here in attendance. And the winner of this match takes on the winner of the Dakota Draper Niles Plonk match. Definitely a contrast in styles here. You definitely got uh, Blaine Meeks, who is very, very comfortable on his feet and up in the air. And you got the uh, ground attack of a big man like the recorder. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is an NWLJC Final Four Tournament Contest. What a beautiful title. The winner of this goes to the big dance April 1st to contend for the KC in WL title. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you first to my right, from Austin, Texas, he's six foot tall, 195 pounds, the man without fear, Blaine Meeks. Mr. Budinski himself. Mr. Always wanting to do what's right, there's a huge difference. And standing to my left, from the Santee Sea Reservation, at six foot tall, 290 pounds, the Lakota Warrior, Red Cloud! We can see one of our wonderful young fans at ringside showing her appreciation for the Lakota Warrior, Red Cloud, here tonight. What was that, a drawing of a poodle? I couldn't even tell. Oh, you know what it was, it was clouds. Red Cloud, come on. And the bell has sounded, and we are underway for maybe one of the most important matches in these guys' careers. The winner of this goes to the finals of the NWL KC title tournament. And I, I agree with that fan that they just showed at ringside. I wish both of them could win. Oh, you would because you are one of those everybody is a winner type of people. There's only room for one at the top, and it might be one of these guys. Looks like Blaine Meeks is going to look to try to keep Red Cloud guessing, try to keep him off his feet with that high-flying offense. And Red Cloud is going to try to keep the game on the ground. He wants to ground and pound, use his strength to topple Blaine Meeks and pick up the 1-2-3. Great agility shown here by both athletes in this opening exchange. Kind of a feeling out process. Might be going for a power slam. Going for a roll-up, was unable to do so. Lakota holding on to the ropes. Jockey for position and arm, you know, hip tosses and arm drags here. Flips Blaine Meeks over, goes for a clothesline. Blaine Meeks ducks, nice drop kick right to the chin of Lakota. Make that two, and the big man still not off his feet. And even after a third one, Lakota is still standing. How many times have we seen Blaine Meeks throw beautiful drop kicks like that at somebody and practically knock him out with just one drop kick? The big man there just took all three of them and uh, still on his feet, still charging after him. This is exactly what Blaine Meeks needs to do. He needs to make Red Cloud chase him. He's a, a guy that is in phenomenal condition. There isn't probably anybody who's in as good cardiovascular condition as Blaine Meeks, and he's got to use that to his advantage. Going for a German suplex there, but to no avail. Red Cloud going for one of his own. Blaine Meeks uses that quickness, flips over. Red Cloud misses a clothesline and elevates wow. Blaine Meeks into the lights. Here at the Scottish Rite Temple, again, as we say week after week after week, awesome display of strength by Lakota Red Cloud. This guy is just so strong. I don't even think he knows how strong he is. I'm sure it's one thing to measure how strong you are with the weights in the weight room, but when you're in there in the ring with a guy like Lakota, uh, there's no telling what he can do to you and, and what it does to your body. Referee Nick Chen on top of the action here tonight. One of the finest referees, not only in Kansas City, but all of the Midwest. And he's going to make sure this match stays right down the middle. Listen, I don't know about that. I think Nick Chen is kind of an idiot, if you ask me. But uh, he, he's uh, certainly capable enough to count a three count. I think this, we're in for a long evening here tonight. Absolutely. Neither competitor here in the squared circle is willing to give 
an inch to the other person. Although they're friends, although they're former tag team partners, they see the bigger, the bigger vision, the bigger picture here, and that's the NWL KC Championship. Nobody gets into the world of professional wrestling to be buddies with all the guys. Everybody wants to be number one. Sure, you make some friends along the way. It's bound to happen, right? Uh, even with a, a drip like Blaine Meeks, people kind of like him. But uh, when it comes right down to it, everybody wants to be number one. Knife edge chop right across the chest. Hard forearm strike. Lakota answers that with a headbutt. Now that is something that Blaine Meeks does not want to do. You don't want to get into a slugfest with a guy that has uh, hammers at the ends of his arms. That's, that's, a, that's a bad strategy on Blaine Meeks' part. For once I actually agree with you, Christopher, that is not a good strategy. Hard body slam to the center of the ring. Elevation on that leg drop. Lakota always surprising with how athletic this man is. Everybody thinks that he's just this big monster. you got to come straight at him. He can't pull things like that uh, out of his bag of tricks. But there you go. Uh, imagine how that feels. 290 pounds dropping right on your throat and your chest. Unbelievable. Un unbelievable impact there. Blaine Meeks firing away with a forearm. He's trying to figure out anything he can do to get an advantage over Lakota. And so far, nothing's working, especially when you get hit with hard clotheslines just like that. Red Cloud is uh, he's wrestling a smart match. He's making Blaine Meeks come to him. He's not chasing him. He knows he doesn't have the cardiovascular conditioning. He's got all that uh, extra body weight to carry around. He's got He's got to make Blaine take the fight to him. And when anybody takes the fight to him, they end up just kind of like how Blaine Meeks is right now. These are two guys who know themselves very, very well, and they know their opponents very well, too. Hard forearm strike to the face. Again, Blaine Meeks, lefts and rights, trying to figure out a way, trying to find an opening, trying to find a cheek in the armor of Lakota Red Cloud, and he drove him straight into the mat with that belly-to-back suplex, going for a cover again, too. Blaine Meeks is around 200 pounds, and Lakota Red Cloud is just throwing him around like he's nothing. So far this match, this entire match, has been controlled by the power of Lakota Red Cloud. Oh, Blaine Meeks up to his feet in a hard knee strike right to the face of the Lakota Warriors. Going for a body slam, and he collapses on top of him too. Almost a three count. He thought that that knee could give him the opening he needed to get that body slam and wasn't able to do so. And 290 pounds went crashing right on top of Blaine Meeks. Not a bad strategy there from Blaine, uh, giving him a hard knee strike right to the face. Goes for that big slam. Uh, Red Cloud too strong. Too, too strong right now. Headbutt right to the head of Blaine Meeks, locking in a big bear hug. And you got to think, if someone as strong as Lakota wraps those huge arms around you, that's going to zap the energy from you in no time. Blaine Meeks trying to fight his way out of it because he knows if he stays in that too long, it's, it's going to be a short match here tonight. Really, really smart strategy from... Oh, my goodness. Did you Beautiful. see the way the, they bounced off of the ring? Beautiful rotation on that spine buster. I've said it before and I'll say it again, Arn Anderson would be dang proud of that spine buster. It would not surprise me if someday Lakota puts somebody through the ring with that spine buster. There's such impact. Think about the impact and the pain on Blaine Meeks' lower back right now. It's got to be unbearable. Once again, the power of Lakota Red Cloud is on display here, firing a right hand into the midsection of Blaine Meeks. And again, no, not a lot of wasted motion here from Red Cloud. He's bringing what he brings to the match, and that is his, uh, you know, his power. And he is letting Blaine Meeks have all of it. Very motivated, uh, wouldn't you say, Lakota Red Cloud? This guy is more motivated than I have seen him. You know, he's, he's a pretty laid-back guy for the most part. Then he gets into that ring or he gets in the weight room and he gets very, very intense. But he is bringing it today to uh, uh, Blaine Meeks. I mean, you saw how hard he whipped Blaine Meeks into that turnbuckle. Blaine Meeks went spilling to the outside. Now here front row and center with some of the great fans here in the Scottish Rite Temple. Look at that, a little bit of sign of aggression from Lakota. That's how much this Kansas City Championship means to Lakota. He's willing 
to slam Blay Meek's head off the apron, quite frankly, and drive him spine first right into that apron, really softening that back and spine up. Absolutely, you're seeing all sorts of aggression here from Red Cloud. It's exactly what he needs to do with a guy like Blaine Meeks. One thing you, I can say for Blaine Meeks, you've got to stay on top of this guy. He is in such great condition. He's a very, very tough guy, very agile. He he's a, has a great wrestling repertoire. That's, you just have to stay on top of him. Uh, where most folks end up having trouble with Blaine Meeks is that he outlasts. This guy can take a lot of punishment. Look at him. He's still fighting back. All that punishment that he has been taking, and yet he's still fighting back against the Cody. It might be too little too late. A lot of people. Another oh spine buster just almost drove him through the ring that time. All the heart in the world may not last. He gets another spine buster too. Almost a three count. Blaine Meeks almost on instinct pops out of that pinning combination. Listen, I don't think he can take too much more of this kind of power. I mean, Red Cloud is really letting him have every ounce of what he's got. We're, show, we're seeing a lot of heart here from uh, the do-gooder himself, Mr. Blaine Meeks. When you hear Red Cloud say, I don't want to hurt you, he wants Blaine Meeks to stay down. He wants to advance in the Kansas City tournament, but not on, you, oh, if he has to oh. injure his friend and his tag team partner, Blaine Meeks. And he just drove him almost through the mat again with that single arm slam. Unbelievable power right there. Blaine Meeks really taking a lot of punishment throughout this match. You know, I don't even think Lakota has been off his feet other by his own volition more than one time during this match. He has been inflicting pain and punishment upon his friend, Blaine Meeks. Going for that leg drop, and he misses. Lands right on his posterior here. That's how quick Blaine Meeks is, as beat down and as hurt as he is. This guy is so, so fast. He's so aware of everything that's going on in the ring, able to get out of that. If, if Red Cloud would have hit that particular move, this match would be over, and we'd be celebrating Red Cloud moving on to the finals. Both men are down, though. That took a lot out of Red Cloud. Look at Blaine Meeks clutching his rib cage, clutching his back. He has absorbed so much punishment in this match, it may be hard for him to mount any kind of offense against somebody like Lakota Red Cloud. And there he is again, fighting back. Hard forearm strike and a reverse elbow, another forearm strike and a chop to the chest. He's trying to chop down the big tree of Lakota Red Cloud. Oh, hard clothesline, the big man almost off his feet. Huge leg lariat there. Leg lariat and another oh. jumpy knee strike and the big He's man won't get down. Wow. And finally, Blade Meeks. The crowd. Look at him, he, he didn't even know he had that in him. He's, Two. He's as surprised as we are that he was able to do that. Look at, look at the look on his face. He feels, the, he feels the momentum on his side, finally, after getting the big man, Lakota Red Cloud, off his feet with that huge body slam. Oh, diving meteor knee strike, going for a cover, two, almost three. Anybody else would have been beaten by that. A man just as strong as Red Cloud is probably the only person who could kick out of something like that. All of his weight on his shoulders, able to get look out of there. Look at the look at his face. This is we've, the we've second. Seen this, uh, recently. This is the second time we've seen that look in his face. A different side of Blaine Meeks. Looks like he's. He says this a, is it. He, I've never seen him act like this. He's going to pick him up in a. I, I thought he was going for a brain buster. And Lakota floats out of it. Did you see the look in his eyes? There's something weird. Oh, he's got him. He, he did That's the jumping leg drop. This, this is, is it. it. One, this is two, three. No. Oh no. Blade Meeks. Wow. Have you ever seen anybody kick out of something like that? I've never seen it. That puts people away for a long time when Red Cloud hits that move. And Blade Meeks has absorbed so much punishment through the match. I thought for certain that jumping leg drop was that was it. And Blade Meeks barely gets his right shoulder up. Oh no, he could be going for the bow and arrow. And if he hits this, it is going to be lights out for Blaine Meeks. Both these men showing an awful lot of heart. And they both have uh, really good given it their all. He's got him up for it. It's an uh, elementary. Oh, now. he's got no. Oh. Blaine Meeks rolls out of it. Wow. Comic, Comic mischief. mischief. He, from got, the he front. didn't take him off his feet. He didn't even get 
He didn't even get Lakota off his feet. Blade Meeks whipped into the buckle again. What is he going for here? He went for almost a flippy comic mischief. One, two, three. He got him. Three, that's he it. He got him. Oh, my goodness. That's it. Blade Meeks is advancing to the finals of the KC title tournament. Have you ever seen him use that move before? I've never seen him do that before. Where did that come from? He almost did a complete 360 comic mischief. I have mischief. never seen that before. And the fans just, showing their appreciation. Amazing what is this match. Now? Oh, oh no. my God, no. Hey, hey, they warned us. They told everybody they were back. Are you kidding me? After such a great match like that, you hate to see it in just like this. How it's all over, both Lakota and... This is ridiculous. That match took both. Both these guys took So much out of both competitors, and now the Howlets are raining on the parade of Blaine Meeks. He's got a pair of handcuffs there. They're handcuffing. What is he Looks doing? Like he's handcuffing Blaine Meeks to the corner. Oh, dear They're God. over Red Cloud. Both these men absolutely to the point of physical exhaustion. I told you, these Howlets are dangerous. They were just biding their time. Biding their time, they looked he, both of their uh, both of their enemies in the same place at the same time. They waited for the end of the match, waited till they were both couldn't take any more, and now these two guys are right for the picking. They handcuffed Blaine Meeks to the far corner, and now are putting a beat down on Lakota Red Cloud. No doubt it's that. Oh, no. This is a receipt, Christopher. This is a receipt for the last time it the Howlets were here in this building. It's absolutely a receipt. You want to put the Howlets through a table, Big Red Cloud? Well, we've got one in your future. It looks like there it is. Blaine Meeks, is, he looks like he's out. He's Blaine out Meeks is he's out in the corner. He is handcuffed to the top rope, and these dastardly Howlets are exacting their revenge. This was a they plot. Warned everybody. Yep, this was absolutely. a plot from the very beginning, and the Howlets are exacting their revenge on the Coda Red Cloud and Blaine Meeks here tonight. Somebody has stop. got to come out here and put a stop to this. This is not right. Both men are spent. After that KC title tournament final four matchup. Oh no, oh no! Down. Down. Choke slam, double choke slam through that table. Where the freaking Come on! Well, you can take on anybody. Referee Nick Chin uh, wisely on the outside of the ring. I wouldn't get in there if I were you, Nick. When the bell Nobody's is ringing and somebody here. needs to somebody come needs to, to the assistance of Blade Meeks and Lakota Red Cloud. These guys warned everybody here in the NWL that they were coming back. They are back. I mean, what is that? What does he have in his hand? Looks like they've got some clippers. Oh no. Out. What are, are they gonna shave his head? Are gonna... What are the Howards doing with those clippers? He's making Blade Meeks watch whatever Marco's gonna do. He's going right for the beard. Oh, the ceremonial no. beard. Oh, no. These guys need How business. How dare the Howlets adding insult to injury. Unbelievable. Red Cloud is a proud, proud man. There's a lot of history and heritage in that long beard. Just mocking him. Unbelievable. Throwing the hair. They warned President This is Major disgusting. Basin. They warned him. Somebody needs to come here. out here and stop the Howlets. Good gravy. The they're the just taking the beard of Lakota Red Cloud. This is disgusting. In all my years of being in professional wrestling and a fan, this is one of the most dastardly things that I've ever seen. And I didn't think the Howlets could sink any lower. The Howlets have uh, coming out to stop him. What are you doing? Wait, here's... We do what we want! What are you doing? We do what security. we want! Security! Major Basin calling for security. some security, finally! Security finally, we're going to get some security gonna go out there. You're going to escort the... They get out. the howlets out of there. Oh, are you kidding are you, me? Wow. And the howlets just leveled the security yeah, guards. Yeah. Shots the security guards. That, that didn't work. Wait a minute. Now here comes everybody. The locker All room the is security guards. The security everybody guards in the, the locker room from the entire building are surrounding the howlets, and they're just laughing. Give me a break. Put it into this now. Get these howlets out of here. They should be fired. These guys should 
should absolutely, I don't know if firing is the, is the way to solve this problem. These guys seem to not, not be concerned with any kind of ramifications for their actions. They told you, these guys are for real. Yes, army of security. 15 security guards there or so are surrounding the Howitz now. This is, looks like they're being escorted out of the building. One of the referees is working on the cuffs to help Blaine Meeks. Blaine Meeks took a heck of a beating from the Howlets as well. Hey, I didn't get paid yet. Somebody give me my pay. Somebody give me my pay. Come on. You got to get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. You give me my pay. 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 You get out of here. We got to get paid. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's go. 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 Let's go.